For years, we have used bikes as forms of transportation, exercise, and entertainment. But now for the very first time, with help from the Staten Island Museum, three designers, John Tetz, Chris, and Tom Spolin, are bringing something unique to the table with the exhibit Making Things Go. Making Things Go is about the underground movement to design a better bicycle, tricycle, uh, not just for kids, it's really for commuters, uh, especially suburban riders who just want to go around the corner. A human-powered vehicle is basically an alternative to a bicycle, a standard bicycle to a wheel or bike. HPVs can go very fast. There's much less wind resistance and so it's an easier bicycle ride and um, it's three wheels not two so you don't have that tip factor so if anyone's uncomfortable on a two-wheeler this is a great choice for them however they're not readily available because although they were invented the Velomobile was invented a hundred years ago plus um, no one's decided to say this is a better form of transportation now more than ever being green is important and human-powered vehicles are showing us how we can make a difference. Diane gives us a few tips. And especially in this area, if you want to drive a car, it's more than just the cost of the car. It's the insurance, it's the petroleum, it's the parking, it's the tolls. It's a huge investment to have a car, yet everyone thinks they need one, or they need two or three. If you want to buy an HPV, it's a smaller market right now because people don't know how cool they are. People don't know how useful they are, or um, they think bikes are for just fourth graders. So people are designing smaller ones for little kids and big ones for senior citizens and also very high-tech ones for racers. There's a huge gamut and if you go to Europe or Australia, uh, the designers that are featured in the show, um, John Tetz is one of them who's very internationally known. Chris and Tom Spolin are local Staten Islanders. They have been working on this as their um, it's not their main job, but it's their life's work, is creating these bikes together. Building an exhibit like this takes time and a lot of effort. But how did all of this come together? This is an exhibition of uh, uh, experimental bicycles, uh, something we've been working on for about 18 to 20 years, sort of as a sideline hobby. About 1990, my brother built the first recumbent and sort of got my curiosity going and uh, as brothers we always used to tinker and what's happened is we've sort of evolved uh, meeting new people along the way and then we met John Tetz and sort of the, the meaning of minds uh, occurred and now we're making some pretty decent stuff. They're much more comfortable than conventional bikes. So you can see here this is the seat. We have even more comfortable ones but this particular model is designed for a stroke patient and it's got the gearing up front so you ride in a recumbent position and that re name reflects the idea that the recumbent is a body position sort of like sitting in a sofa and your feet first so that you're more horizontal um, and that gives you better aerodynamics. You might also wonder what inspires these guys to build HPVs in their basement. I think the what if factor, what if we did this, what if we did that and we had a lot of failures along the way, I mean, frames breaking, parts breaking, and along the way we had a lot, lot, of, lot of laughs, too, in, in the process, because there's no rules to this, you know, and there's no, people say, where did you buy it, and you have to explain to them, we didn't, we're making them. Since we were kids, we always made stuff, but as my brother says, now we have money, and we can make really good stuff. And I know it sounds hackneyed, but it's fun, I mean, we, uh, it, it's a complete, complete Thing. We don't need a lot of what society offers. Making and then Sunday morning climbing into these things is absolutely exuberant. It's a new frontier, as you might say. People have used the expression, it's not rocket science, but it's bicycling science. It's something completely unique. Building an exhibit like this takes time and a lot of effort. It's a little bit unique in the way we have to read it, but what we're doing is scanning the images and scanning, scanning the words and from that you get an understanding of what the story is all about. Early recumbents and how they were uh, basically underground for all these years. But through those years they developed better and better and better vehicles. This is unbelievably important, especially with our environmental problems that we're having right now. To view Making Things Go, visit StatenIslandMuseum.org. The exhibit runs through September 28th.